What are you doing around a woman that the husband has refused to touch for three years? What are you doing there? Is there evangelism? What, what are you? What, what's happening? Huh. What is going on? You want to transmit spiritual energy. <laughs> he said, abstain from every appearance of evil. He's, he's saying, do not have confidence in yourself. Do not have confidence in your training. Do not have confidence in your discipleship. As long as evil is appearing, what do you do? You have to from so that you will not have to explain yourself later. You get that? Right, so let's do something with Romans. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We'll do Romans chapter 6 verse 19. Then we'll do Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so yield now your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. The key word here is called what? Yield. Please help me preach to your neighbor. Yield. The way you, you, if you preach, if that's how we, are, we preach, nobody will be converted. I say, help me scare him with that word, yield. Yield. Do you know what it means to yield? Yield. You see, the thing about your vessel is that there are times, if you are under the influence of loss, your vessel has its own mind. It has its own direction. But you yield it, you force it to yield. Yield your members as what? As instruments of righteousness. So as you preach the gospel, there are going to be days when you are heavily under the influence of lust. Not because the lust came from you. Where you went to, the place is polluted. So part of the pollution affects you. But if you know the trick called yield, that counts for nothing. The fact that you are under the influence of lust counts for nothing. Remember, it is a big matter. The issue of fornication is a big matter in the sight of God. I don't have time. We need a whole evening to talk about fornication. I don't have time for it today. Hallelujah. You sit under a pastor for one calendar year. You don't hear the word fornication. In the wrong place. If your destination is satanic, if you still know that, that if Jesus tarries, we will all die. If, you, if it's in your brain, you will know that that man is a trick star. It's a trick star. Because we went for training in Calabar. I was not going there for immorality. We were going for what? Training. We finished from Gomez Plaza. Those of you that know Calabria, there's a place called Gomez, Gomez Plaza. That was where they situated the meeting. When we finished and came out, there were na naked women were on the road, on this side and on that side. In fact, one of my colleagues saw the women, and he gave thanks to God. <laughs> A few of them went there to sample the product so that they will know which of the products will produce greatest benefits. I was not going for that. I was going for training. But immorality followed us there. So I ran away, went to the hotel, Gomez, and booked for a room there so that I won't have to be coming out. So I did for five days. 
from lecture to my room, from room to lecture for five days until we closed on 12 noon on Friday. Then the women had not yet come out. That's how we escaped to the airport and flew for our lives to Lagos. I know you are not looking for evil. That was not your plan. Evil will look for you. That's what I'm telling you. Evil will look for you. So you don't plan, you plan to survive evil. Yes. Satan cannot, cannot afflict you as long as this your vessel is not soiled. He, he, he will miss the target. I know what walking in righteousness has done for me. I know what it has done. So as evil is appearing, I will escape. They say, ah, he's weak. Don't worry. That's, go ahead with it. But the thing is, I have fled. I have escaped. Don't trivialize fornication. And I, like I said this night, I don't have time. Are you there? So yield your members, servants of righteousness unto holiness. Yes, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Where I want to go is sanctification of the spirit. That's where I want to go. So, but I need to pass through this. Place. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The, the emphasis here is your body. You must, you must compel it to yield. This is part of the requirements of our consecration. You must present what? Your body. Now, I'm going to stop here for body. Can you see that sanctification involves our body? Involves your heart? Now we are going to go to your spirit. Because even if, are you with me? Even if, this is my note. Let me read my note to you. If our hearts are established and our bodies are possessed in sanctification and honor and yet our spirits are defiled, then our holiness is not perfected. How do I know this? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. So I just started the lecture for the evening. If I hit one point, if the Holy Ghost comes, I will stop and I'll begin to minister. If the spirit is still defiled, it means your holiness is not yet perfected. The circle must be complete because God's vision for sanctifying you involves your spirit, involves your soul, and involves your body. 